Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm just going to take a minute and I'm going to load our comments in our video. Sorry guys, I just dropped my heat tool. Ah, sorry about that. I'll give everyone a minute to come in and we'll get right into it. Here we go. Hi T, thanks for joining love. I can cut this way just a little bit. Here we go. And I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna grab my book. There we go. Sorry, T, my other phone's causing me grief. <laughs> I need to um, switch up my other cell phone with my, um, my Ultra. Because it's not taking a charge, and it takes forever to clear the notifications and go through everything. That's why I'm late. I was fighting with it. Hi, Terry. Hi, Lori. Thanks for joining. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for joining. So I have two things in front of me, guys. I have newspaper um, pieces. And for me, it doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's like just a bunch of script. So that's kind of, so you can see where I've used it. And then where I haven't used it is like bits and pieces here and there. So I'm just kind of mindful of what I've used and what I haven't used. So this is a book page. So that's what we want, guys. We want like some scraps. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, I have a, I started making something here. I have this piece here of a book page and I have scraps of book pages. So I'm keeping them separate. So my scraps of book pages are here and my scraps of newspaper pages are here because tonight we're going to want both because I'm going to show you some techniques using both and what the difference is. So we're going to kind of continue on from where we left off last week, but we're going to create the next page in our book. So as you can see, I've done some here and there, but I still have lots of space anywhere that's white that I can still use from, from the um, newspaper print. So yeah, I just want to keep those separate, newspaper and book pages. That's scrap. Okay, so... Newspaper pages and book pages. And then I put under the files um, yesterday. So look for that each week, guys, on either um, Wednesday or Thursday of every week. I'm going to be adding a freebie to the, um, to the group files for Mixed Media Friday. So basically, it's just public domain images or things that I've done or created. Like I actually, um, I'm really proud of myself, guys. I made the mushrooms from scratch today. So those are mine. I created those in Photoshop. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to be creating my own graphics and doing all kinds of different things. And these are public domain. And then I've taken some script and I mirrored it. So I figured, so I remembered how to do that. And um, we'll use that for some image transfers. So if everyone wants to go ahead, we can take a second now and we can cut these out. So again, I'm not too worried about um, completely fussy cutting. We're just gonna... Okay, I would say the bird, let's completely fussy cut him. Because this one is not going to be an image transfer. This one is going to be something that we're just going to collage on. And then you can kind of see the difference between page one, at, like from last week, to page two from this week. Um, last week we did the, the bird on a smaller scale and he was actually on a branch. So I changed him and took him off the branch for this week. 
and we're going to be just collaging him down. So we're not going to um, do an image transfer with him this week. So when you flip between the, the front and the back page, you're going to be able to see the difference between what it's like when he's collaged down and then what he's like as an image transfer. So you'll be able to see that difference. So again, this book that we're making is going to be a great reference of how to do some basics in mixed media. And that's what I'm going to do every week, guys. We're going to make a page together and we're going to um, learn some new techniques. And some of you guys might know some of these techniques and there might be refreshers, but I'm going to have lots of um, valuable information every week um, of all the basics and how um, I do things and my tips and tricks along the way of the things that I've learned. So it's going to be super fun. So I hope you guys follow along and feel free guys, um, after you complete your pages, everybody pretty well has a week. Um, I have a week between the videos. So as you guys finish your pages, feel free to post them to group. I'd love to see, um, your take on it because it's super fun. Um, with, with anything guys, you could give, um, everybody the same tools, the same printouts, the same instruction. But yet everyone is going to create something completely different because we're all different people and we have different experiences and we have different, um, you know, we've all, we're all different. And it's just so amazing to see everyone's interpretation of, um, of their art. So it's just a lot of fun. And I encourage everyone, you should, you should give it a try. It's a lot of fun. So there we go. I've just about got my bird fussy cut in. So I wanted to do this in real time, guys, live so that, you know, we were relaxed when we're doing it and you don't have to worry about being too prepared ahead of time. I just like to have generally my materials in front of me so I don't have to get up a bunch of times because for me, that's, I don't like to do that. I like to kind of have everything at my desk that I need for my video so I don't have that, um, because to me, I guess that's kind of like an interruption for me when I'm, you know, wanting to create and I got to get up for stuff. So that's why I want to give you guys a product list as well. So then you guys can ex know what to expect um, the following week and what we're going to be doing and um, what products you're going to need to use. So I think it's super fun for me to share that and probably very helpful. Here we go. I just about have him fussy cut. And I'm not too worried about the others. The others won't have to be so precise because they're all going to be image transfers. But this. He's just going to be collaged down when we get that far. And I'll show you what we're going to do. Now I mentioned everyone picking up the gummed craft tape. Now, what it's for, guys, it's for basically for framing in a print. So you can find it on Amazon. You can find it in most most craft stores. Um, any kind of, like, um, artist um, store that sells, like, art products and things. Because, again, it's for framing prints. And it's not too bad. I think it's, um, depending on the size of roll, it's usually between, I can get it between $15 and $20 a roll um, in Canada. And I'm sure you guys in the States can probably get it um, quite a bit cheaper than that. But it will, guys. It'll last a very, very long time. And I think it's an essential item to have for um, collaging and for doing different techniques. So to me, it's just as useful as like something like my, my book pages or... Um, Or like a printout to use kind of thing like in mixed media. So I highly recommend it because it just gives you another texture and another layer, if that makes sense. See, that's a great price, T. $8.99 on Amazon. That's great. So there, I've got him all fussy cutted. 
And um, so again, that's our tape here. So basically what it is, it looks like craft and feels like craft paper on one side. So guys, we can gesso this, we can paint this, we can stamp this. Um, it's like paper on this side. But this is where the magic is on this side. It's almost the same kind of consistency on the opposite side as an envelope. So you know how you have the, you have the um, adhesive side of the envelope? So I'm going to be going through this each week, and there's some different things that we're going to be able to do. So this is one of the items that I highly recommend. And then the only basic of products that we're going to be using, guys, is um, your Ultra Matte Gel. So the matte, and we're going to be using Gloss Heavy Gel in gloss. So this is basically another way of saying any gel medium that's matte, any gel medium that's gloss. And as you can see, my container of matte is way bigger than my container of gloss because I use this for image transfers and I use this one for collaging for using my distress crayons. It's a primer for your your distress crayons. Um, it's for collaging. Um, you can decoupage with this. This basically replaces your Mod Podge. And um, I like to use Mod Podge for napkins, but if I'm collaging something like tissue paper or my handmade tissue papers that I make, then I like to use gel medium. You can also take your napkins and your um, your um, your napkins and your tissue papers, like Tim Holtz um, tissue paper, the Prima papers, and all of that, and you can decoupage them to fabric. And to do that, you would use gel medium. So this is kind of like the universal product that goes a very, very long way, and that's why I like to buy it in the 16 full ounce containers. Now, as you guys know, when I first started out, I was using, like when I first started doing videos, I was using the Tim Holtz, and the Tim Holtz Collage Medium is the exact same product as this. It's also a gel medium. They basically look the same, they smell the same, they work the same way, and it's the same thing, guys, when I'm doing the lift technique. So, with, with your gel medium, the lift technique is where you take a stencil and you put you put your stencil down and then you put, um, you take your paintbrush and then you put the gel medium on with your paintbrush, let it completely dry and you ink over it. And then when you, when you, um, spray it with water, you lift it off. So that's how I got this technique here. That's texture paste. But how I got this technique here is doing that, uh, resist. And I don't like Tim Holtz resist spray. I find that it's basically, um, a glue that's in a spray bottle and it goes all over everything. I needed a razor blade to get it off of my glass media mat. And um, if you get it on your table, it'll wreck your surface. And um, it sticks to your stencils, it doesn't come off. So I do have a couple of stencils that from having that sprayed across it, it didn't matter what I did, I could not get it off. So I just wanted to share that. So it's kind of like Gel medium for me is that one product that replaces all kinds of other products. So I wanted to share that. So it's kind of like you can you can do these techniques with your gel medium that give basically the same effect as using some of the other products. And the other essential things that you need is um, is white gesso. You're gonna see that guys that I use gesso a lot for a lot of these different techniques. So I just wanted to share that. And the other one is um, my white acrylic paint. So the only difference between my white acrylic paint and my gesso would be um, the binders. My um, gesso has the binders and obviously the, the, uh, the white acrylic paint is just the pigment. So I just wanted to share that. So they are used for different things and I'm going to show you um, some different methods. So I just basically want something that looks like this for my vintage because again these are all going to be image transfers so they don't have to be perfect. So that's why the text is all backwards so when we transfer it down it's going to be precise and forward. There we go. And also, guys, I post these for Mixed Media Friday, but you're also welcome to use them any way that you like in your journals. So there's that, too. So if you see something that, oh, I'm doing a nature journal, Fifi, your mushrooms will be perfect, or my botanicals, or any of these things that I've done. So last week was ferns, and this week I did daisies. So there's like a rough 
daisy foliage here. So feel free to follow along for Mixed Media Friday and then to use these any way you like in your journals. Yep. So here's all my scraps. I will get rid of that. Okay. So those are basically the four basic mixed media products I would say that are the most like the most essential out of out of everything. And then of course I use texture texture paste, but I don't use them too often. And tonight I want to show you an alternative for your um, crackle paste. So you don't even really need to buy that either. So I'll show you um, my alternative. Okay, so I just want to move some stuff around so I have a little bit more room here. There we go. Uh, book pages can be put beside me over here. And I'm going to keep an eye on the comments too, guys, so I can see what everyone's saying. There we go. I've got my book pages and then, of course, my newspaper pages. So just keep them separate into like a little pile. And then I have my, my printout. So all here. So here we go, guys. Here's my book. Um, so this is what we did last week. This was all doing image transfers. So again, I did the bird a little bit smaller. And um, we he was on a branch last week. We transferred the image. And then I showed you the different surface techniques using newspapers. So last week, we only did newspapers. And then I showed you how to do the... Um, image transfers. So where we did them um, with the method doing um, the acrylic paint, they're backwards. And then where we used our um, packing tape, they're forwards. So tonight's method will be forwards because I printed them backwards, if that makes sense. And then we just added some distress crayon in there. So we're just going to continue on right where, we left, right where we left off. So over here, new page. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in with my painter's tape. You can use painter's tape or you can use scotch tape, whatever you have. Now for this one, I am not going to do the bottom and the side, I'll show you. But I do want to frame in the side. So I'm going to frame it right here. There we go. And across. this and this is just to frame in my my piece okay and I'm gonna come across the top so I'm gonna turn it around and go right across the top but I'm going to come right to the the edge and the bottom so hopefully that makes sense guys there we go Okay, so we're right like that. There's the front of our book, the first one, and then we're going to continue here. So I'm just going to tuck these. I'm not worried. It's just going to frame in my page. There we go. So this gives me a perfect frame oh, around my corners and my sides, and that's not straight. So as you can see with the painter's tape, you can, you can easily reposition it if it's not perfect. There, that's better. Perfect. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then, there we go, we'll smooth that in. Perfect. So now we want to take our, we want to, I just want to make sure I'm completely in focus, you guys can see. Perfect. So here's our, our gummed tape. So for tonight, I want to take a couple of good pieces that are the same width, if you guys can see, sorry, the same length, as what would be between, um, the, like, to the bottom of the page, the very bottom of the page, all the way up towards the top. And what we're going to want to do, again, you've got two sides. We want to glue this down on the matte side down with the shiny side facing up. Okay? So what we're, I'm going to do is just come in easily with my gel medium. Right here, gel medium. And I need a paintbrush. I have a bunch of water beside me. And I want, always have um, a paper towel or some baby wipes handy. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. 
is grab my um, grab my paper towel. Okay, so I want to, so you guys can see, I want to come in on this side where we're working, and I'm going to coat this whole side from the bottom all the way to my tape line, if you guys can see. Yep, covering it right like this in my gel medium. And I want to be relatively quick. I probably should have used a larger brush, but that's okay. I just want a really good stick. And we're going to put this shiny side up. So the craft part of it is going to be facing down. Because it has two sides. It has a shiny sticky side. And it has a matte side. Okay, there we go. So now I can just literally come in. Starting at the very top. Like this. I want to make sure I have a relatively straight edge. And it's easy to cut it. It's like cutting an envelope. That would be about what I would compare it to. I want to come right to my edge. Okay, and I'm going to yeah, slide that up to right to my paint line. So when I pull the tape, it's going to be parallel to my tape line. And there we are. And to the bottom of my page. Perfect, right here. And then I'm going to need to come along this side here and glue this down. So now that I have an idea of what my length is, I can tear this. So I'm not, yeah. There we go. I wasn't quick enough, as you guys can see. It dries very quickly, so you have to make sure that you're getting it all down. There we go. And the more humid it is, the faster it dries. And it's been quite warm here today. Usually warm for us. We've been in the 20s the last two days. There we go. And the gel medium will give it a good stick down. And I want to add a couple to this. So I'm probably thinking two would be a good, a good size. Two. And I want to think about the size of my bird too. Just so that's the great thing too, guys, when we're doing the um the techniques um with the printables, because then I can make sure that they're all in the right perspective of the work that we're doing. So basically, no, I think one's going to be perfectly fine. So essentially, guys, what I'm looking to create is a fence post, if you guys can see. So maybe I will do this one a little thicker. So um, we'll overlap it. So I will, and that'll give us some texture here too. So I would come up right along here, guys, with a strip going a little bit overlapping the last one and then right beside the next one because we're essentially going to be creating a fence post so that's kind of what I want to use this tape for so this tape has a lot of really good uses I like it for doing like a faux fence I like it for um because you're gonna be shocked when I show you guys what kind of texture we're gonna get from this once it's once it's done. And um, the other thing I like to do too is um, I like to use it in collaging. And I like to stamp on it and use it like another layer. Kind of like, again, like I would like a book page or, or something. Because it has that nice craft, that nice craft texture. And you can easily rip it too. There we go. There we go. So we're going to collage that down. So there we go. I have a nice sized um, line of it here, right? 
And again, I want that perfectly here. It doesn't have to go right to the top. That's okay if it's a little... Yeah. And I need to get that down. Perfect. Yep, that's perfectly fine. And then... Sometimes that initial to get it down is a little stubborn because it is. It has like a, a heavier weight on top mm -hmm. than it does on the bottom. So it naturally wants to curl. And that's normal. But once you get it down, it'll go down. Like that. See? Perfect. Okay. And then the other thing I want to do is give this almost like a halfway mark with one panel. So it resembles that of a fence. Maybe just like right here. Because what I envisioned when I'm creating this page was like a close-up of a close-up of a fence post with a bird. So think about when you're taking like a photograph and there's a beautiful bird sitting on that photograph. Like a beautiful bird sitting on that fence, sorry. When you're taking the photo, it would be a close-up of the bird and of the fence. So you're not going to get the pers um, perspective of the entire fence. You're just going to literally get the close-up of the bird and that piece of the fence, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what we're going for in terms of um, composition. So I've taken the perspective out of um, trying to find the image and and the things and the elements. So that's the great thing about the printable guys. I'll do that work for us ahead of time. So we don't have to worry about finding um, an item in that right perspective. So I just wanted to share that. So again, we're gonna collage the mat side of our, of our piece. And I'm just using gel medium. I'm not using gloss, I'm just using my mat. I match on medium, but you can use gloss. If you just have gloss, go ahead. Anywhere where I use matte, you could use gel, or sorry, gloss. The only thing you can't use the matte for is um, image transfers. It's only the gloss that you're able to do the image transfers with. So I just wanted to share that. So again, we're gonna make this probably around, um, yeah, a little lower. So again, we wanna break our, break up our focal point, as I mentioned last week, into thirds. So one, two, and three. So that's how you generally look at your work. You look at it into threes when you're collaging and when you're creating like a, like a compositional uh, piece. So again, it would be one, two, and three for your thirds. So he'll be pretty much centered like that. So I'm really happy, and he looks like he's going to be grabbing on to the, to the fence post, like that. So that's going to be perfect. So that's just how I like to line everything up. Take my focal point image and just make sure I have it on point. So the other thing, and I'm not worried about the top here because we'll do something else at the top after. So I just want to make sure um, I'm just going to turn it this way, and I'm going to cut those pieces to the proper length of my page. So they're not hanging out way over. There we go. So I've just done that. That's done. And I can use these for collaging a little bits later. There. So now that we have that done, we'll give that a second to dry and I'm just going to close up my gel medium. There we go. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, and I'm going to do it right here so you guys can see. I want to continue to stay in focus, but I want you guys to be able to see. I'll move that up. Perfect. So you can see here, I'm going to take my Liquitex Titanium White, and I'm just going to put a little bit down. Not much, just a little bit. And I'm going to take a larger... Mm, lighter paintbrush. Let me see what I have here. That one's probably good. So I'm probably using a size, this one says 14. 
So just something a little larger. This is just something I can, can in, come in and add. So I want to dampen my brush. I don't want to soak my brush, but I want it to be, like it's not dripping wet, but it's it's wet. If you guys can see, I'm putting water down, but it's not like it's completely soaked. So then I can come into the white. So I just want to add that tiny little bit of water. Now I am using a... Um, Liquitex ba uh, Basics Acrylic, and um, is it heavy body or soft body? I'm just reading here. I'd say it's medium because I didn't find it to be overly thick and I didn't find it overly thin. So basically I'm going to dip my brush one more time into the water because I want it to be, if you guys can see this over here to my left, this consistency of it being like a nice, if you guys can see, it's like a nice um, textury kind of white. It's not too thick and it's not, oops, and I got it all over my book too, didn't I? Yep. That's okay. So very carefully, because we're at the edge of our page, I just want to come in like this, and I want to put that down, and I want to add a little more water. So I want to make it like a good, light consistency. Here we go. There we go. Because we want to be able to move it around. So if, as you guys can see, I'm already starting to see that crackle texture. And as this dries, it's going to crackle. See, and I've got it. It's fine. I have baby wipes. I can wipe that off later. I'm not worried. I just want to get this down. There we go. So just again, just water. I need some more paint. Just a dab. Okay. You don't need much. It goes very far. Okay. And go right to the edge. And again, we're going to pull this one up so that's not going to matter. And even if I get it onto my page a little bit, that's not going to matter too much. I just basically want to make sure that I have a good consistency in my paint. And I'm getting, there we go. And I'm getting good coverage. All right, and we're going to let that dry. See, so yeah, the more watery that we make this, there we go. Because that's what we essentially want to do, guys. That's a water reactive tape on there. And we want to react the tape. So you want to make sure you're getting enough of the white acrylic paint, but we're also activating that, the gum tape. There. So as you can see, I'm already starting to get the cracks, and it's going to look like a wood grain fence. If you guys can see that. And then as we go, it's going to start to crackle once it dries. So I'm really excited for that to show you guys. And now I can get rid of that white paint. And I just literally come in with my uh, Mr. Brush and I can pick it up off the glass media mat. There we go. I'm that person that will stick my arm in it. <laughs> and I can miss my paper towel. Come in and just see guys clean up my book because I touched that with paint. So again, no big deal. That's the great thing about working with acrylic or um, watercolor. It's all water-based. So if you get it somewhere where you don't want it, come in with a little bit of water and you can fix it. So again, we're going to leave that to dry for a second. And um, um, before we position our bird, see I got a little droplet of water on him, no big deal. And um, before we position our bird, we could go ahead and do our first image transfer. So, and then what I thought to do, OK, 
Okay, so let's do the script and let's do it up here in this corner, right like that. So it kind of becomes part of the background. So now what we're going to do, we're going to come in with um, our gloss heavy gel. Yeah, we'll start with that one. Oh, thanks for joining, Cheryl. I'm glad you made it, love. Here we go. So now I want to take my gloss heavy gel and I want to come right across here. So I don't have to be too precise. I just want to make sure that all the bit of my um, my image that I want to transfer is completely covered. So again, and I want to be quick about it because this does dry very quickly. So this was, these are printed on my inkjet printer. So anything that you print on the inkjet printer, printer, you can turn into an image transfer by doing this technique. So last week we, we transferred the bird and um, a couple of words that ended up backwards. And I will show you guys as we go and we collage. So we're just going to do this. So this is from the printout. You can do some of that first. I just want to make sure I have that whole area done. And you're going to need your heat tool. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not because you need this 100% dry before we, we um, do the next step. And I'll show you guys again. So this is like something that's kind of like a staple in mixed media. So this is something that we're gonna be doing over and over and over again. So the gloss gel medium is a must. I touched my arm on it and that's okay. So see guys, if you can see all the, the crackle, it's going to look amazing. And as it completely dries, the, the cracks will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So here we go. I have that one there down where I want it. Oh, I have it upside down. See what I did? That's okay. Mine's upside down. <laughs> Never fails. Ah, oh, well, it's going to be unique. Don't do yours upside down. <laughs> It happens when Fifi's rambling. She doesn't pay attention. That's okay. Okay. Now I'm going to hit that with my heat tool. Make sure it's completely down. And completely dry. Then we're going to come in with some water. Uh, you can dip your fingers into water. You can use your mister, whatever you prefer. And we're going to rub this in circles until, as you guys can see, once your image is revealed, that's when you stop rubbing. So essentially we're taking off this layer of, um, of page, if that makes sense. And I just kind of pick it up as I go. And it reveals our image underneath. There we go. Sometimes the ink smudges. Sometimes your, your, your page will tear. So you're going to get all kinds of different effects from doing this. So it's a lot of fun. And again, I just kind of pick up the wet, yucky bits that come off. 
I don't have anything on my fingers. So that's bleed for my inkjet. And that's okay. That's going to give it a really cool effect. And again, more water. So this is just to give us something in the background. Um, this works with black and white images and it works with full color images as well. So this is using the gloss gel medium and I'll show you some other ways to do it too. That could just be my book page. Let's see. Well, that's okay. See, I've got some that tore. There we go to reveal my image. And I'm just taking that off. And this is, this is neat because it just kind of, it doesn't matter um, how many times you do it. It ends up different every time. And bits and pieces of your image are going to look faded. Some are going to, it's going to tear in some spots, as you can see. And it's great because it just gives it like that totally different effect. So again, if I did that the right way, it would be perfect. But I did it upside down. Sorry, guys. And that's okay. That just gives it something in the background. So then I can just take my paper towel and just give it a little brush off here. Anything that's kind of stuck I can pull or I can, I can gel medium it down. So now I'm going to take my gloss gel medium. Come back in with my brush. There we go. And I'm picking up little bits of paper off of my paintbrush. So that's another good thing of, of um, coming back in with your with your gloss gel. Because then it kind of refines it, if you guys can see that. So sometimes you miss that little bit on the surface. And it'll literally pick up right into your brush. And then I can just do one of those and get rid of it. Okay. perfect and it's given me like a gray color so that's kind of neat because um the black bled a little bit I find when you're doing like yellows they don't really bleed um the browns don't really bleed but when you get into doing blacks and reds they bleed so the next thing I want to do um so last week I showed you guys um the newspaper transfers so the first way again is to take your gesso so I'm going to come this way because you guys don't really need to see that other page. You just need to see this one and then what I'm doing here. So I have a little bit of gesso here. Okay. And I'm going to come in with my fingers. And I'm just going to add like, you know, just, just that bit to my finger. 
And so we'll start out by putting like a little bit here, if you guys can see. And then I'm going to take my newspaper print. So this is newspaper. And I'm going to put my, my newspaper down into the gesso. 12 seconds, I would say. And just give it like a really good press. Yeah, about 12 seconds or so. Just kind of give it that really good stick down and quickly pull it up. Okay, so that didn't work. That tells me I didn't have enough gesso. Add some more gesso. Wasn't thick enough. That's okay. It happens. And again, guys, it's also humid here. So, yeah. Trial and error. About 12 seconds. Good pressure on the top. This one doesn't have to be dried like the image transfer. You just have to kind of blend it in. And then you pull it up. So see, I've got a couple of words. That one I think I've used already, so that would probably not be a good example. Let's do, here we go. I'll pull some words from here. And let's do one. Yeah, let's just go right over top. Let's do this whole area here, because that didn't get a good stick. Here we go. We'll do this one here. And again, I just want to come in this side and just give it a good... Twelve seconds. Huh. You know what it might be? It might be the gel medium. Let's try it down here. That's okay. My book page theory will work up there. Uh, let's try it down here. That could very well be it. It might not look the gel medium. See? We're testing theories here. Okay. That's okay. And I probably need a little bit more than that. All right, here we go. Newspaper print right here. Okay. So it's just not like in the gel medium. You guys will see. So this is just on a plain untreated surface of my 120 pound card stock. Again, we're rubbing. Oh, thanks for joining, Lorna. I hope you're feeling better soon, love. There we go, guys. So see, and we peel it up, the text comes off. So that was too thick there. So let's try that again up here. Just right here. Let's see, newspaper print. Yep, there we go. So see, you want it nice and thin. You don't want it too thick. But what I am going to do now is put this on the same kind of way like I just had it. But instead, I'm going to put a book page there. So, I need a book page. Here we go. And I'm going to leave my book page right there. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing up a little higher. So, we can do the book pages here. And I'll put that one here. So with the newspaper, we're only going to leave the newspaper on for um, a few seconds and pull it off. With the book pages, we have to um, dry it with the heat tool and then pull it off. And you're going to see the difference. So this is kind of to show you guys the difference between the two methods. And then I'm just using gesso. So again, 12 seconds to an untreated surface. So yeah, it'll work, just not with gel medium. So it's just the newspapers don't like the gel medium, which is fine. So it's on the untreated surface. 
And again, we just want to wait that good 12 seconds or so. And we're going to pull it up. So, so see, that's perfect, if you guys can see that. And then I'm going to hit this with the heat tool over here. Okay. Here we go. And here. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to tear it off. Okay. Oh, so that didn't work. The gel medium again. And that's what we want. Right like that. Where it's taking bits and pieces. There we go. That worked. Right here. Just minus there. Perfect. So that's the difference between doing that with a book page. Yes, he didn't like the gel medium at the top. And that's okay. I can script stamp that and cover it. So if something doesn't work out, it's no big deal. We can just add more layers and we can cover it. And see, it took a little chunk out of my page. It doesn't like the gel medium. So again, we probably should have done the book pages first and the gel medium over top. Learning curve, right? It's been a while since I've done this. So no big deal. So as you guys can see, this here is now the difference between the image transfers with the newspaper and the image transfers with the book pages. So if you guys can see that now on an un and I did one over here as another example. So this is what it looks like on an untreated surface. Cause I do guys every week when I'm coming live and stuff, I make notes. So this here is my example of the book page. So that's again, an untreated surface. That's just gesso. So anywhere where the gesso was touching the book page transferred. So as long as there's no gel medium, it will work. So it's just not loving the gel medium. And that's okay. I'm still happy with that. So that's great. And this, as you guys can see, is dry. And there's our crackle texture. So, and the more it dries, the more of a crackle texture we're going to have. And then it's going to have a like a gloss finish because of the, the gum tape. So then I can come in and we can collage him down. So again, like maybe right here and I'm just going to collage him down. So I'm not going to transfer him down. So we're just going to come into our gel medium, like our matte gel. And we're going to completely cover him. I got a little water on him. That's okay. He just looks like a nice little mixed media piece. Okay. We're going to cover him in gel medium. And we're going to collage them down. So when we flip between the two pages, we're going to see the difference between an image transfer and then the collaged image. And then when you're doing the crackle texture, it's very difficult to do image transfers around it. Like right on top of it sort of thing. So in this case, we would just collage them down. There we go. I just want to get his little feet. There we go. I'm completely covered. Sorry, guys. And there we go. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for joining. So I want to just position him and get him kind of exactly where I want him. Probably right around here. That's probably good. See, so looks like he's standing in front of here and not too close to the edge of the page. And he's kind of got a grip on the, there we go. Yep. Or he's kind of got a grip on the, there we go, on the fence. My hands dry there. 
Yeah, I'll just make sure we have a good stick. And then I like to come in and seal him in. So I just want to come in. And it doesn't matter. You can use matte or you can use gloss. I'm just using matte for him. He doesn't need to um, be glossed. There we go. And it's fine if you mix the two product products on a page. It's not going to do anything. And they both dry um, clear. Just um, the matte dries matte and the gloss dries gloss. There we go. I just want to seal his little feet in. In his body. There we go. And the same with the mushrooms. I want to put the mushrooms right here. And then I'm thinking to, I was going to put this one here. I'm just not sure if they're going to transfer down. I mean, we could try, right? I just don't want to pull the tape up. Uh, we can always save that for next week. Or for something else we do. But I will do the mushrooms and I'll put the mushrooms right here. Because that'll look cute at the bottom. I always want to make sure I have enough, um, items for image transfers and things so all right so now that that's done we can go back into our gel medium so i can show you guys again so this is the gloss and then we're going to take our mushrooms Here we go. And I want to completely cover just my mushrooms, not the entire page. Just make sure they're nice and wet. Just the kind of area where I want to transfer. Here we go. Done. And I'm going to place them, yeah, right about here. Um, no, maybe, yeah, let's do them here. Really like that. And again, we're going to heat this, hit this with the heat tool. Perfect. Give it a second to cool. And again, I'm going to come in with my water. I'm going to hit that with water. And I'm going to rub off that layer. There we go. And again, we lose sometimes part of the image, and that's okay. So anywhere where it's not completely gel medium down, it'll come up. And that's okay. And I'm not doing this really hard. I'm doing it very lightly. Yeah, I don't know why that doesn't want to. Come on. There we go. That's better. So you can see where the image comes through. That's same with this one here. You've bled a little bit, but that's okay. I have pieces of that mushroom. There we go. And I'm not doing it really hard. I'm just pushing it light enough that I'm getting 
that top layer to come off, if you guys can see that. Just very slowly. There we go. And I have that little bit of pink going on there. That's okay. And then again, I just pull off wherever it's not wanting to stick. There we go. Perfect. So if you guys can see that. There, I've taken off this extra little bit here. Well, there we go. That piece came down. Perfect. And that's how we do image transfers. Those two different ways. One with gesso and one with collage medium. And then, yep, yeah, and it's fun too with the book pages. You just have to make sure that they're drawing. Like they're, like they're, um, they're dry and they're away from any uh, collage medium that you have. So again, I want to come in with gloss because I want these to pop. So I'm going to come in and do that. And then we are pretty much done, guys, so we can add our pigments. So I just wanted to show you guys some new techniques with that. And I'm really excited um, next week we're going to um, start using our gel plates. And I'm going to show you a pile of different ways that I like to use mine. Um, people generally, with the gel plate, they do one layer and then they do a print. And I'm going to show you something different. Because I like to do multiple layers before I print. So I'm going to show you how to achieve that. And then how I use it in mixed media. So we'll get into that. So this is pretty much our image transfers. And um, the surface techniques of adding and subtracting. Like um, when you're adding your your book pa your book page down, you add the gesso of the book page and then you remove it. Um, the other way that I do um, additive and subtractive techniques is again by adding the layer of um, collage medium through stencils, and then I stencil over it and I use water to lift and pick it up. And um, I've got more stuff coming um, in more depth with that as well. I just want to get into doing some jelly plate stuff. So I'm really excited for that. So I'm going to leave it at that for the transfers. And then we'll just come in with some pigments. So anywhere that you kind of see right now your work while it's drying. that This is coming up. Feel free guys to come in with your PVA glue. And just give it a little glue down or use some more collage medium. Sometimes it is a little stubborn. Because this is the side that's usually meant to stick down. <laughs> it's not usually the side to meant to stick up. So you're going to, I find that it's sometimes um, it's stubborn. There we go. But it gives a really neat effect if you guys can see that. I'll come close again. Now that it's pretty much dry. We've got that really nice wood grain texture. And it all crackled. There we go. So then I can come in with my Distress Crayons up here where I've got the gel medium. And I want something darker because I've really... Um, so in that case, guys, where you've kind of hacked up your page a little bit and you're like, oh, I'm not really sure how to cover that. Don't get discouraged. I'm just going to come in with some Wild Honey. That spice marmalade I'm looking for. Wild honey. Here we go. So it just adds a nice wild honey up at the top. And I can just come in like this, guys. There we go. And I can come in my water. And I can just move that around here. So it kind of just gives it that nice... There we go. It kind of looks like a piece of faux, um, if you guys can see that, like a faux piece of um, old tape. That's kind of what it looks like, where I've gotten that, like, kind of that tear effect. So it'll just kind of, when you start adding the pigments, it'll 
reveal some of the texture that you have, but it won't, um, see, and then I just want to blend that. And maybe, I like that, the wild honey. I want to come closer to the top. It'll give you the texture without revealing what you did to the page. It's kind of like you as the artist would only know that, right? And I want to come down this way too. And again, I'm not really too linear about things. So for me, this is like the huge step out of the box, guys. Because I'm more of a splatters um, kind of person opposed to the lines. So, this is new to me, but super fun. So, I just kind of, I like to give you guys an idea of what you can do, right? And all the different ways you can do it. There we go, and I'm just giving that a nice blend. And it's grungy. I like it. I'm super happy with that. And you can add script stamping and there's all kinds of things that you guys can do. And I can come in like this again with the wild honey. And you can still see where I have the book pages. So I didn't completely collage over him. And the other way, too, that you can do this, so if you want to hide some of that gesso, you could just come in by just doing kind of like one of these guys, where you're just adding like that tiny bit of pigment. So this just kind of adds to it, right? There we go. So you're not completely committing, and you're not losing book page. You're just blending if that makes sense I could even just give it a little spritz there we go that's probably better there we go so you still get the full effect if you guys can see that where you're just blending it in and then I do have one more and it says vintage but we didn't really get that far and that's okay um but that's completely dry there. Maybe I'll do some more text. Um, just right here. Add that tiny bit of gesso. There we go. Put it down like that. Yep. And wipe it up. And I can come in with this right here. There we go. Sorry, Terry, how far did you get, love? If you guys need any help, let me know and I can stop and I can help you. Or um, if I'm going too fast, just let me know. There we go. And we're pulling up the page. That reveals some more text. And I'm just going to continue the theme of the wild honey all throughout. See it? Right here. Just to give it kind of that vintage kind of look. Just to kind of finish off our piece.
and there we go. So you have that kind of continued color throughout our background. That yellow makes him pop. There we go. And then when we reveal it, we just pull off all of our tape. And we have that perfect frame around the entire thing. You guys can see that. So again, this is the page that we did last week. And this is the page that we did this week. Could have very well been that it was the back side of the other one, and that's the reason why I didn't want to do the transfers. That could be part of it, too. I don't think it liked the gel medium, so that's another part of it. And yeah, they are 120-pound pages, but it's just trial and error, guys. And again, a lot of these I have used, so it has bits of gesso here and there. That's wet from my water. So it's just trial and error, and, um, you know, it just shows you. Sometimes it works really well, and sometimes you just have to kind of you know, rethink and, you know, you get something kind of out of the box and that's okay. You know, to me, to me, the grungier it is, the better. So I'm happy. <laughs> oh, sorry, T. Yeah, mine's a little mush too, if you guys can see that. But yeah, that's the beauty of it, right? We're looking for grungy and we're looking for that kind of watercolor look. And again, guys, if you don't like it, paint over it. And um, I want to do some watercolor classes to show you guys how to do some, some doodling and how to take the doodling and to paint it and to, like, accent your pages in your, um, in your books. Because it's something you can do right over coffee dyed paper or you can do it over um, um, anything, really, like in your, in your junk journals. So I wanted to show you guys a bunch of different things that we can do. So, um, so I still wanted to start, yeah, we did the image transfers the different ways. This was with our, just collaging down book paper, papers and then our, uh, magazine, sorry, our, um, newspaper pages. And then this one here is the book cover pages, um, with the, um, newspaper print. And then doing the crackle texture. So yeah, between the crackle texture and the, um, and the, uh, gel medium transfers, it didn't. The, the book page method didn't want to work and that's okay so just trial and error what's going to play well with what it's been a very long time since I've done these techniques since college guys that's how long <laughs> so it's kind of me going back through and oh yeah I remember that and just some super fun things that we can incorporate using very basic things so if anyone has any questions or anything PM me and I will have um, our freebie up between between Wednesday and Thursday for next week. Um, I don't think we're going to need one this week, though, because we're going to be doing um, uh, the jelly plate. So anytime that we do image transfers or anything using images, I will share them in group and let everyone know when there's a freebie. And this coming week, we're going to do um, we're going to do some stuff with the jelly plate, and um, I'll have a product list on Monday by Monday posted. I'm hoping to do it Sunday, but probably Monday I'll have it posted. All right. I want to thank everyone so much for joining me. You guys have a fabulous weekend. It's a long weekend here for us in Canada. So I will see everyone this week and um, enjoy. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.